What's up YouTube? I'm Josh Newland from Newland Performance. In this video I'm going to show you how to improve your game even when you're just sitting on the couch. So obviously we're all going through a global pandemic right now. This is something none of us have ever really seen before. All of us need to stay inside or at least stay at home and you know we're limited to indoors or pretty much just our backyards or local parks so so most of us have a lot of free time a lot of time at home you know just sitting on the couch laying in bed not really sure what to do with our time and for right now i can't even run or train either because i have a small fracture in my ankle so i can't put too much weight on it so this video is really relevant for me for all of us because we're all quarantined right now once this is all over it should still be relevant because if you want to take your game to the next level you're going to have to do these things and these don't involve any physical effort. You don't need a ball. It's pretty much just you watching, reflecting, and analyzing games, your own film, your own mistakes, and what you can improve on. So I'm gonna show you different techniques and methods you can do to improve your game just sitting on the couch, literally, laying in bed even. You know, these are simple and they don't require too much time or effort, but it's really gonna set you apart from your competition, from your peers, your teammates, and it's gonna make you a player that's a lot more aware on the pitch. But before I start, I also just wanted to say, if you're looking for more at-home workouts, things you can do at home with no equipment, body weight, I'm posting a lot of that on the days and weeks to come on my TikTok and Instagram. On my Instagram, I post my workouts, exercises, nutrition, what I'm eating, motivational quotes, and also keep you updated when new YouTube videos come out. And on my TikTok, you can find tons of short videos of workouts. A lot of them are already at home, body weight, no equipment. And also some short soccer training videos. A lot of them you just need a ball and some cones or just a little bit of space and a wall. So I'd recommend you guys go check my social media out. I'll link it all in the description. And for Instagram and TikTok, you can just search New and Performance. You should find me. So let's just start off simple. Just watch soccer. Watch whatever high-level professional soccer you can find on TV or YouTube right now. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot on. There's no live games because of this pandemic, so that's a bummer. And as long as you're watching high level professional soccer that you can learn from. But you gotta remember the key here too is you can't just watch it just to enjoy it. If you really wanna take something from it, then you need to be analyzing you know, the, the players in your position, how they act in certain situations, you know, and think about the why behind things. Why did they decide to take that touch into that part of the field? Why did they decide to go send a long ball or cross it in when they could have made a short pass there? and really, really pay attention to their off the ball movements because that's something that's so big and so many people when they watch soccer they just follow the ball the whole game. You know, even when they watch, you know, specific clips, a lot of times just highlights of what people can do on the ball. Yes, that's of course important, but so many decisions are about when you don't have the ball, especially if you're a forward or a center back, you gotta be proactive when you're off the ball movement. You can't be reacting to what happens. You're too late at that point. What makes Messi such a dangerous striker is his runs. It's not, he is amazing on the ball. He's one of the best dribblers in the world. But his off the ball runs, movements, scanning the field, his awareness, that's what makes him the greatest. He's always aware of where he is on the field, where he is in relation to the goal, where he is in relation to other defenders. And then also the other way around, great center backs. They keep an eye on the forward. They know where they are. They know where the forward is in relation to the goal. They know where they are in relation to the goal, so it's easier for them to block shots, to force them to have a bad angle if they do give up a shot. And defenders are acting proactively. Van Dyke almost never waits for people to come to him. He tries to beat them to the ball if he can. He goes up for every header, and he's almost always in the right place at the right time because of his movement off the ball. So really focus on just picking out a player in your position. Center mid, just watch one center mid for one half, then maybe watch another center mid on the other team. And obviously try to pick the best ones. Don't just pick some guy, you have no idea who he is. Try to pick the best player on the field that's at your position. And really pay attention to what they're doing and why they're doing it. And pay attention to little habits. For example, one thing I would never do if I didn't watch soccer as much as I do is when the player is about to take it out to the goal line or it looks like they're about to shoot or cross it, and you're defending them, you're in front of them, and put your hands behind your back like this. There's a lot of pros that do that, and it's really smart because there are a ton of handballs 
<clears throat> they give up PKs or dangerous free kicks because they don't put their hands behind their back and their hand is out here, whether it's intentional or not, their hand is out there, it deflects a little bit, that's a handball. So if you can pick out those specific little habits, little things that players do in certain situations and apply them to your own game, it's gonna help you improve and just those little things can give you the edge in a game. So watch high level professional soccer, watch the player in your positions, whether they have the ball or not, don't just follow the ball, don't just watch it for the enjoyment. Of course, watch some games with your favorite team when it's on, but if you're wanting to learn, just watch Watch specific players in your position and pay attention to everything they do. The next tip, which is a little bit more specific, is you can just go on YouTube and search up, you know, for me, for example, I play center back. My favorite center back is Van Dyke. I think most people can agree he's definitely one of the best in the world. So I'll just search up on YouTube, Van Dyke versus, and then you want to pick a team. So for example, Tottenham. And then you want to make sure when you look that up, it's not just highlights of him versus Tottenham. It should say, Van Dyke versus Tottenham, and then a specific date. So that way you know it's gonna be all his touches on the ball on that game, on that day. It's not just gonna be his highlights. You're gonna see everything he does, whether it's a mistake or a highlight, you know, just a simple back pass or a header goal. And this time, this can be actually a little bit more efficient if you're just studying like a specific player, like I said, because all it's gonna show is their touches on the ball, their decisions, you know, when they made tackles, went up for 50-50s, those kind of things. And it can really break it down more for you to analyze closer. Most of the time, these videos are just showing when they're on the ball or like when they go in for a tackle or things like that. This is still really beneficial, especially for like mids, you can really break down their decisions. And it's a lot better than just watching highlights and it's also more specific than if you're just watching a random game and you don't really know who those center backs are, if they're you know one of the best ones in the league or mediocre in the league. This way you can watch your favorite players at your position and you can see all their flaws, mistakes, highlights, you know, just simple back passes, their decisions. And it can save you a lot of times. A lot of these videos are you know six to ten minutes long whereas watching a whole game, you know, ninety to a hundred minutes. You know, and there's gonna be some times where the player in your position might not even be you know, on the camera if you're a goalie, obviously. So this is just a great way to pick out specific players, watch their habits. You know, if you're like a winger that's physical, quick, likes to take people on, you can watch someone like Triore. If you're a really offensive-minded, like fullback, you can watch like Trent Alexander-Arnold or Danny Alves. And if you're like me, you know, just watch one of the best overall center backs in Van Dyke, watch what he does, and try to mimic that in your own game. And next is watch your own film. How are you gonna know what you need to improve on if you're not reflecting, analyzing, watching yourself play? Obviously there's certain things you're already gonna know about how you play, your style, you're gonna know a lot of that already, but when you actually go back and watch it, you get a full view of the field. You're not just looking through your own eyes, you're seeing the full field, you're seeing, oh, maybe I didn't mark that guy in that play. Maybe, oh, maybe I really wasn't in the right spot in that play like my coach was telling me or my teammates were telling me and I thought I was doing the right thing. You gotta reflect on your own mistakes, your own strengths, your own weaknesses. You gotta know what they are. You gotta know what to improve on and you have to see it from a different perspective than your own eyes. And if your team club isn't already recording your games for you and doesn't have film for you, I'd really recommend just having someone, parent, friend, whoever's coming to watch, ask them if they can record for you. Um, ideally you wanna get up high above the field so you have a better view but even if it's just from the sideline and they can just focus on you, that's better than nothing. Like you wanna get your games recorded, you wanna have film for you to watch and analyze yourself playing. And when I watch film, I really analyze all my touches, but also almost any time the ball is on my half of the field, because I am a center back, my positioning is so important, my communication is so important, so I'm watching myself, seeing how am I communicating with my teammates? Where am I positioned? Where am I? Like how close am I to the forward? How much space is in between me and my nearest fullback? Is our line straight? You know, all those kind of things you need to focus on. Not just looking and skimming through for highlights. You need to be looking at all your mistakes, all your good plays every time you have the ball, and just any time where you have an impact on the play or the other team's decisions or your team's decisions, 
anytime you have a roll in there, you should be paying attention to see what you might have done wrong, done right, what you could have done better. If you're a forward, really pay attention to your habits. Do I check in a lot and give an option to my mids, to my other teammates? Am I more, do I just kind of float between the back line, not really, you know, coming in trying to make space for myself? Am I taking my shots or am I trying to wait for the perfect opportunity to come? Those are things you really need to watch and learn from. When you pair this with watching professional level soccer, watching individual players versus teams that play your position, then you have that standard set of what the best in the world are doing at your position, how they play, what their habits are, and what are my habits, what do I need to mirror from them to get better? <coughs> Am I already doing certain things that they do in the game? So compare yourself to what you want to play like, find the differences, find the similarities, and then you'll know what you need to work on. And my last tip is to mentally practice or visualize, you know, playing, doing the right things, and making good plays. Positive visualization and mentally thinking through the technique, you know, doing the right things in the certain situations is extremely beneficial. I mean, you can ask almost any, you know, pro athlete when they go to take a PK, they're all positively visualizing. They're visualizing where the ball is going to go in the goal, how they're going to strike it where the ball is going to be in relation to the goalie. The speed, force, curve on the ball. Is it going to knuckle? Am I going to chip it? You know, they're visualizing exactly how they're going to do it and they're visualizing it going right, positively, scoring the goal. It's the same thing that golfers do when they crouch down. They're watching the ball, just looking at the hole. It's not to just crouch down and look at the ball and look at the hole. They're visualizing them, hitting it just right. The ball rolling into the goal. Ugh. The goal. The ball rolling into the hole a specific way. It's a positive visualization and it's very powerful. And this normally is most powerful and most effective and also satisfying when you're doing it right when you're about to physically practice it. But if you are injured or you did already train a lot that day, you can still always mentally practice it and think through it later after the fact. You know, if you're injured like me and you can't do it physically, doing it mentally is really gonna improve your game and it's gonna improve your technique because you're just focusing on the proper technique and you've already got a picture in your mind. It makes it so much easier to go and physically do it. And in fact, there's a TED Talk video that talks about this. They had a study where they took two groups of basketball players. One group physically practiced single hand free throws for two weeks. The other group only mentally practiced single hand free throws for two weeks. And the intermediate to advanced basketball players, after the two weeks, the ones who just mentally practiced were nearly making as many free throws as the ones who just physically practiced. I mean, that's crazy. For two weeks, they didn't physically make or you know even practice, try to take a single-handed free throw. The other group was just physically making them, not making them, shooting them, working on it. And the ones that just thought it through, just mentally practiced, thinking about the technique of how they made it, made almost as many as the ones who physically practiced. So hearing that, I think it's absurd that you know not everybody is doing this visualization, mentally practicing, at least right before you're about to take a free kick or a penalty kick or do something in the game, at the very least should be doing that, let alone how much it can help you if you do it before every practice. If you just do it when you wake up in the morning, you know, just little things throughout the day, at practice, at training. It is so powerful. And I'll link that TED Talk video down below. It's all about, you know, how to practice effectively more than just what people think about, just, you know, constant repetitions. You need to think through it, be uh, mindful of your practice, and it's a really good video. But just take a little bit of time out of your day. I recommend, I think it's best when you're about to practice and you're literally about to do that thing it's really helpful but again if you can't physically practice you need to stay inside like right now it may seem weird that you're just sitting down in your room just thinking about how to shoot the ball a certain way but it'll be very beneficial and helpful just take maybe 20 minutes a day as a start put down your phone put down your distractions just sit down Focus, close your eyes, just visualize certain techniques, how to tackle, you know, just visualize, visualize yourself going one-on-one -on -one with, you know, the best player, 
you know, with your team's best striker and you do it right. And, you know, you make a great tackle, you block his shot. Um, you know, we're going against another player on another team that's one of the best in your conference or your division or league, whatever you play in. Visualize it going right. Sometimes it's weird because you're in control of your mind, but there will literally be times where I visualize something and then there will be five or six times where I visualize myself just making a mistake. And then I failed trying to do that trick or that shot miss in my own head and I'm not even doing it. So imagine how that's going to be on the field when you don't even have the confidence to think you're going to do it right, let alone when you're trying to physically do it right in the moment. So take that time to mentally practice, visualize. If you can paint a clear, vivid picture in your mind, it makes it so much easier for your body to do that. So take advantage of it. All these tips, all these things are things that the pros and the, the best of the best are doing every single day. And it's not even something that requires a whole lot of physical effort, but it's going to set you far apart. It's going to boost your confidence. You're going to be much more aware. You're going to be a better soccer player. You're going to have more confidence. Your mindset, your mentality, you're going to feel way more prepared before every game. And it's really just going to give you that extra edge on other players that aren't, also, that aren't doing the same thing as you. So I hope these were helpful. It's unfortunate. A lot of us have to stay inside now with this quarantine stuff. Um, you know, it's frustrating that a lot of us are limited to our own backyards, a local park, can't do team trainings. <clears throat> you know, my spring season got canceled, and I probably would have missed out on most of it anyways because of the fracture, but it's still just frustrating for everyone. But we really have to make do with what we can right now. Do the best that you can. Like I said, all these things, all you need is literally, you know, phone, computer, or TV, you know, internet connection, go on YouTube. Try to find whatever games you can, or record them, or if you already have some recorded, go and watch them. You know, a lot of channels are now replaying games from before because there's no live game, so they're just replaying them for you. And even on like social media, like Man U, um, in the last few days, they've been putting up like replays of classic games from the 90s and things like that that are great to watch. So do what you can, where you are with whatever you have. Make the best out of the situation. Now is a great time to do all these things in this video because you're going to have less distractions. You're already at home. You're already watching TV on your phone. You might as well be doing something productive, making yourself better. So there really isn't any excuse to not do any of these things. But finally, I just want to say I'm going to be releasing an at-home workout on here and next week, hopefully. It's going to be abs and upper body. So be on the lookout for that one. But with all that said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, you can follow my social media to see a whole lot more videos, tips about nutrition, fitness, soccer, and especially a lot more at-home workouts, a lot of things you can do at home to improve. Those will be coming in the next days, weeks, maybe months. But thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one.